don't understand. Well, I don't understand any of it. This is not reasonable behavior. It's What's not reasonable about trying to grab hold of something when you're drowning? Oh, drowning. Mm. Yes, drowning. Don't yell. Drowning. Drowning in the life we're living. Drowning in the house we're living it in, the people we're living it with. Are you including Liz in D.W. Yes, I am. What do you think of that? I'm drowning in my own children. Drowning in the, the carpools and the dirty clothes and the report cards and the PTA. You know, it's hardly logical after 11 years of marriage. Okay. Are you I'm drowning in logic. Logic and in stereo systems and the world's first 50-story completely domed city and never yelling. Stop it. That's right. I'm making a scene, aren't I? Well, that ought to make it easier for you to let me go. You'll probably find your life a lot less embarrassing with me out of it. I am not embarrassed, and I want you to stop this nonsense immediately. I was ready for you to argue with me. To try to talk me out of it. Try to persuade me, maybe even plead with me. I didn't know if I could make it stick. You can be very persuasive when you try. From the moment I telephoned you until you walked in here, I was preparing myself for a very hard battle. But Henry, you just made it easier than I ever could have hoped. You said it was nonsense. What are you doing? It's for my coffee. No, I... Goodbye, Henry. What if, what, if, uh, what if we saw somebody? What if we had counsel? Henry, I suggested that three years ago. You thought that was nonsense. You said so. Well, maybe I was wrong then. Maybe you're too late now. But don't worry. You'll be fine. You don't need me. You don't need anybody. You never have. Goodbye, Henry. Wait. Are there anything else? No. Should I bring a check? Yes. Keep the check. Janet. 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 What about the children? Now, don't... Don't they need you, even if you don't seem to think I do? Nobody needs me the way I am. But you'll be able to manage. You're so logical. Well, you simply really can't just go like this. I can. If you watch me, you'll see me do it. But this doesn't make any sense. I mean, go where? For how long? Driving, folks? I'm not driving anything. I walked. What about you, sir? Here. Well, you probably haven't even packed a bag. Uh, I mean, I know you don't have any money. This is unreasonable. You said that before. You'll just have to put up with me being unreasonable. Well, what about... How am I going to explain this to people? <laughs> the only part that really upsets you, isn't it? How are you going to explain it? Goodbye, Henry. Mother, I'm sorry. Thank you for babysitting. How are you, Liz? How's it going, D.W.? I thought your children would be in bed by now. Mark, why didn't I try this corn? It looks steep and nutritious. Uh, well, that must have been delicious. It was gross. Grandma said we could stay till Mommy gets home. He had to go to the office after. Yes, well, Mommy might not be back till uh, quite late. I don't think that they should stay up. Did Janet call you at work? She said she was going to. Yes, she did. Is there anything the matter? She sounded... Oh, uh, well, I, I really don't know. 
Well, we'll talk about it later, all right, Mother? The strangle said if he did it one more time, he'd be suspended. Suspended, and I think so, too. Uh, I don't think they should wait up for Janet. Oh, Daddy. Half an hour more, Kev. Oh, what time is it? 3.30, dear. Oh. I just switched off. Daddy, that's not fair. I'm not required to be fair. I'm your father. Now, you have a choice, both of you. In the 30 minutes remaining before your bedtime, you can either carry on in your rooms or not carry on out here. Do you understand? Hmm? That's better. Now, spare me further static until you're both in bed. Mother, come in. Sit down. You want to talk about it now? I'm not sure there's anything to talk about. What did she tell you when she called? Well, um, just as something had come up suddenly and that you weren't expected home until quite late, would I make Liz D.W.'s dinner and stay with them until you did get home? Mm-hmm. She's left me. Oh, darling, she didn't. No, indeed, she did. Henry, I'm so sorry. Why? What did she say? She says she was drowning. Oh. I see. Oh, you see, that's funny, Mother, because I don't see. Well, for how long? Is this so uh, permanent or is it only temporary? Does Janet want to divorce you or, or just not live with you? Well, the discussion never reached that level of lucidity. What about Liz and D.W.? Did the discussion reach that level? Yes. She's left them, too. Well, I just can't believe that. Coffee? No! no. Uh, but she loves Liz and D.W. She was terribly, terribly... Poor Janet. Poor Janet? She's the one that left, Mother. I'm, I'm still here. I didn't leave. Poor Janet. What about a little sympathy for me? You have all my sympathy, dear, and so do Liz and D.W. They're the ones we have to think about now. Yes, they're the ones we're going to have to think about because Janet somehow didn't think about them before. <sighs> what am I going to tell them? I mean, how do you tell a couple of young children that their mother has abandoned them? Well, maybe when she's had a little time to think it over. Mother, I get the impression she's been thinking this over for quite a while. That this is the result of her thinking it over. Call her up, Henry. Give her a little time and call her up. Try and work things out with her. That is, if you want her to come back. Naturally, I want her to come back. Who's going to take care of things around here? Stevens in her airplane has just told us that we have a bottleneck at Coango on the Hollywood Freeway and then back further up off of Balboa as you get up on the on-ramp. But you'll get to more of that here in a little bit.
I mentioned it's going to be hot today, really hot. And the humidity coming in from the ocean that we've never had before, but I don't want to talk too much about that. Now, we got a couple of things coming in here. We have a Mr. Morris Miner, a man who recently wrote a book that perhaps you're familiar with. He is the world's biggest bigot. This man maintains that even though he is a quadroon, and his book, of course, I Get My Security Out of My Ethnic Purity, has sold extremely well in South Africa. He believes that he can bring bigotry to the United States of America and make it work. So as I mentioned, we should have him here at about 20 minutes past seven. So again, about a couple of minutes past seven, Zio's gonna come in here with a couple of minutes of news, then we'll get right back. Time to get up! It's seven o'clock. DW, DW, get up. Liz, Liz, you too. Both of you. Come on up. Good morning. Get up. Liz! Oh, come on, Liz, wake up. Liz! Liz, wake up. Wake up! Daddy, what are you doing? What does it look like I'm doing? I'm waking you up. Come Why isn't Mommy? Because she isn't, that's all. Is she asleep? No, she... Did you come over late last night? Liz, can you just wake up without asking so many questions? Now, come on, get out of here. Go to say hi to Mommy. Don't go in there! I want to see Mommy! She isn't there. Where's Mommy? She's, um... D.W., there is no reason to look at me like that. I did not strike you! You're yelling at me! What if I stop yelling at you? Will you stop looking like I just beat you up? I'll try. Fine, okay, fine, so will I. Now, come on, get up. Daddy, didn't Mommy come home last night? <sighs> no, she didn't. Now, come on. Why? D.W., you can... You sit up here! <sighs> Mommy, uh, well, she thought she'd like to go away for a while. Where? And Why? She just did, that's all. She thought she'd like to have a little vacation. I thought we'd live at the beach house for a week? Yeah, something like that. 